Hello everyone. Today we got something that's a little bit different. It's not a bulb, it's not telephones, it's not plants. But what we have got is a quack type machine used by the old quack doctors in years gone by. I suppose in a way it's allied to the, uh, the violet ray machine that I've put up. Um, anyhow, I'm not, as I say, I'm not showing it working simply because it takes a rather unus unusual battery, which I'll show you. But this is just to show an item which turned up, quite frankly, I'm not sure when it turned up. I sorted this out for, uh, from the loft and very pleased. It's all there. The whole item is complete. I'll show you what it is. Basically, if I can use that word, it's um, an in, um, you've got a, now what's the word for it? It's in, you've got an interrupter there. Now this buzzes in and out. It's similar to how an electric bell would work, a trembler bell. Um, the reason for this, it goes in and out. It operates a metal core in the middle, which is magnetic and draws the armature, if you like, on breaks a contact there you've got a make and break you can adjust it you've got the adjusting screw see as I screw it out you can adjust it and the idea every time it is attracted by the electromagnet the circuit is broken now on top of the winding which activates the uh, the trembler circuit you've got another winding of very fine wires and many many turns and it acts as a transformer or an induction coil and that is where you get your higher voltage from now at this end I'll show you you've got a little rod which goes in and out and around the core of the electromagnet and when it's pushed right in it's at maximum strength it produces most juice or electricity at that setting as you pull it out it gets less and less it's also graduated as you've got a little scale on there which is just an arbitrary scale. It's in numbers 0 to 100. And it's just a, a rough guide, I suppose, to what is the low tension or the highest. You've got three terminals. There's your terminals. You've got holes that I'll show you what was in there because I've taken them out. And what that is, what that is, and the little screw stud in there. I'll show you those. Before I do, let me show you the battery box. Turn it over. Turn it over gently. Don't want to break anything. There's your box, and in there, they're the two terminals. They would be the t the, uh, the actual connections that the battery would fit in that square. The type of battery you can no longer get now. But having said that, you can modify, I think you'll find what they call a bell battery, if they're still available. Um, for, um, how many volts? Is it? It's got three cells. So it's uh, four and a half volts. It's a four and a half volt battery and what you can do is to solder wires onto these two screw terminals of the battery 
and then either touch them on with a touch of solder. You'll have to clean these because corrosion has come in. Remember this item is quite a few years old. Somewhat older than me, so it's blooming ancient. It's nicely made, got a nice case, and the you've got the slider which goes back into the actual bottom of the unit and slides across. It's manufactured by EverReady. That's the same EverReady that made batteries. Let's turn it back so I, I can show you it. There's the write-up on it. It's even got the write-up that was still in there. There's the name. British EverReady Specialities. I would think this probably goes back 1920s. 1930 something in that region I would think and there's the actual name ever ready electric coil and it shows you a diagram of all the bits showing you what the bits are called what they're for I'm not going to read it out I'll just show you what the components are that go with it they're all connected to the fact that they give out an electric shock if you like by touching them now firstly the normal two things you would have are your two handles if you like that you would hold and get the electric shocks which in those days was thought to be good it's actually a load of rubbish it doesn't work but in those days people thought it was and you could always almost or, or also do this by there's a wooden handle so you would hand this to the person that was holding the other one and say grab this and obviously as soon as he grabbed it he would get a shock it's quite safe it's very very low current but that's what they did in the old days. It was supposed to be therapeutic. Now, that handle which is screwed in there, I won't take it out, but I'll show you what else it could be used for. We've got four other items. We've got a little roller. It looks like it's got a bit of... It, it looks like wash leather around the outside sham well, where it is or not I don't know presumably that would be wetted first you would screw your handle into that little hole there the person that was using it would obviously hold the other handle in his hands while using the other hand to rub over parts of the body which needed treatment uh, if you had a headache or uh, uh, anything painful on the head on the body you would roll this over and hopefully that would cure it it wouldn't really but they thought that would in that case also we got two other probes or uh, pads which would be also rubbed or dabbed over the body so if you've got any bruises or aches and pains you would place these near where the aches and pains were and hopefully it would cure them a lot of imagination I think but there we are and if you had a smaller area you've got a smaller one and that screws into the handle so the handle would be taken off, the wire kept in, in the handle obviously, and it would be screwed into there. You've always got to hold one handle and the appliance or the part that you're using. You've got to complete the circuit. Lastly, on that little group, you've got a comb. And in those days they would think that combing your hair using electricity 
would make your hair grow, which once again is a load of rubbish. But in those days people believed it. And that would have the handle, which I've showed you, screwed into that little hole there. And once again, the person combing his, his or her hair would hold that handle and comb the hair with the other handle connected. So you always had a circuit. They'd wire it up simply by attaching the other ends of the wires to one of these. There was two strengths. One strength I believe was those two and the other strength was that terminal there. Tells you all about it on the blurb but without getting too technical uh, that is how it works. Now the comb which we just showed you slots into that little clip there so the, the comb would go in there the handle and the two probes if you like would go into those holes and the pads three of them one goes there one goes there and one goes inside the lid that believe it or not is basically it it's probably a mahogany box it looks like it's made of mahogany any questions please ask and I'll try and give you the answer um, sorry about the fact it's got a little bit dusty on top there you'd have the name which shows up ever ready and as I said before that's the same ever ready as the batteries during that time they were they were made in England it was an English firm but now I think ever I think ever ever ready are now owned by an American group so there we are that is it once again thanks for watching any comments please make any questions please ask if I can answer I will sorry I'm not showing it working one of these days when I get the battery in it and get it all cleaned up contacts I will show it working I might even hold the handles mind you electric doesn't well I say it doesn't really bother me I've had so many shocks in my life with electricity you get sort of well, not so much blase but um, you can be the, you can forget what you're doing and touch something and uh, you know all about it so obviously take care but this is if anyone's watching this is perfectly safe and um, all right you'll get a tingle but it is safe anyhow that's all I've got today I thought I would put this little video up so once again thanks for watching as I said before any questions please ask and I'll try and answer them anyhow thanks again thank you